going to introduce our next speaker. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm Barbara Rockwell, and I am an active member of this OAM committee. And it is a very active committee. But uh, I have a, a wonderful person to introduce. Her name is Leslie Cortina. I haven't known Leslie that long, uh, but uh, she is very active at uh, Peak. Do you all know where Peak is? The Pennington Ewing Athletic Club. And I've been a member of that club for many years. In fact, it was dear Don Williams, who was a member of this church, who got me into this. And so I've been taking classes there for many years. Well, Leslie has been working with uh, physical fitness, joint mobility. She's very active with yoga, with meditation. When you started your meditation, I looked at her and said, oh, I think I'm used to doing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, but she is a delightful person. She leads a program on joint mobility, uh, and keeping your body active. And she realizes the importance of not only physical activity, but going to something like this is also very social. You know, I say, well, if any of you know me, I'm very social. <laughs> and uh, I often say that I have many families. And I certainly have my biological family, I have my dear church family. Uh, I'm a bridge player, and I have a bridge family. Many of you know I'm a bridge player. And then I have my family at peak, because it is a very social time. So it is with great uh, excitement that I introduce you to Leslie, and she'll probably tell you more about herself, and I'm sure you'll love her as much as all of us older adults love her. <laughs> That's it. Well, first of all, first of all, thank you uh, so much for inviting me to come and uh, speak. Uh, yeah, it's not on. No, it's on. You can go closer. It's on. There we go. Really have to hold it close. Um, so thank you so much uh, for having me this morning. Uh, it's a real gift to go second. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and to think back on some things that have been said um, by Nancy in the beginning when you, uh, you said something in your prayer that really resonated with me. Um, the privilege of aging, the privilege of being here, and it is an incredible privilege. Uh, it doesn't come without its price. As we all know, it's physical price and it's mental price. But more about that in a little while. It is uh, a, an incredible gift, really incredible gift. Um, before we get started, I think um, what I'd like to do is just, in a couple of uh, words, tell you a little bit about myself. Um, because I think that um, it's probably a gift to know where my, where my motivation comes from. Uh, why am I so passionate about uh, fitness? and uh, therapeutic movement in uh, the uh, senior age group. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, first of all, uh, I just turned 60 in May. Uh, so in some circles, I guess I am a senior. <laughs> yes, I am a senior. Yes, I am a senior. And you know, it's all, it's all relative. It's all relative, exactly. Um, so I am a senior. I uh, raised my children in this community. Um, I have two children uh, who are grown and out of the house. They're 31 and 32. Um, and I'm a grandmother of two. I've uh, been married to the same person for 37 years. And uh, we live in this community in Humboldt Township. It's a fantastic community. And um, so that's a little bit about um, my, my demographic. Um, and I have to tell you, um, on a sad note, uh, neither one of my parents lived to be 60. Yes, um, and it's, as I say, uh, it's always said, it always tugs at me to acknowledge this. It's something 
that I think about every single day. Um, but it is the motivating force for my own wellness. Um, my fitness, my wellness, everything that I do to keep myself healthy. Um, and I have evolved in my fitness, in my therapeutic approach to my own wellness over the years. And I have to say, I've been a fitness professional for 32 years now, and I've taught many different populations. And uh, I'm going to make a confession to you uh, that about 10 or 12 years ago, uh, at where I teach at Peak Health and Fitness, uh, there was an already established program, the very beginnings of the Forever Young program, as it is known. Uh, and there was kind of an emergency uh, a teacher in one of the classes could not make it to her class. And I was already there teaching another class, and someone came to me, our, fit, our current fitness director, and she said, Leslie, I know that you don't teach the seniors, I know that you don't teach in the Forever Young program, but we're really in a bind. All of the seniors are here, they're having coffee now, and they are expecting that in 30 minutes they're going to have a class. And I said, okay, well, I'll just, I'll do my best. Uh, so this is about 10 or 12 years ago. Um, I may have taught a good class, but my heart wasn't in it. Uh, and I'm confessing that to you, because I don't think that I really had my calling to that specific age group. I really wasn't there mentally yet. I wasn't there mentally. And it's not because I didn't have respect um, for an older community. It's not because I didn't have any contact with the older community, because I did, because I did. I just didn't, in my mind, uh, have an approach that I thought that I really needed um, in order for me to give a really good class, really good information, a really good program. So fast forward to about five or six years after that, I was approached again to take over two classes. And I thought differently about it. It was almost a challenge to me that several years before it didn't resonate with me, but I felt a calling, I felt a tugging. And that's probably because of what I was experiencing with my two in-laws, my, my, my husband's parents, who were thankfully, until a year ago, both still living. Um, and I'd become very close to them because remember what I told you a few moments ago, that my own parents uh, didn't live to be 60. So I had a lot of experience uh, with the needs of my, uh, my aging in-laws, who were incredibly active people, active socially, um, somewhat active phys physically. Uh, so I think that that's probably the reason that I jumped into teaching for the Forever Yo Yoga program, Forever Young program, uh, and started to share uh, my own combination of movements and format uh, that, was, that I really feel is unique to me. Uh, though there are other teachers who do teach in our program, uh, I've sort of come to something that is a reflection of what my own interests are and my own passions are. Um, so that's sort of, you know, bringing you up to the present and probably um, why Barbara approached me about coming to talk to you today. Um, I'll echo a few things that uh, Joe Carolyn has told us about the importance of movement, the importance of being active. Uh, you know, we've heard all kinds of uh, cliches about, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> um, I remember one thing that my mother-in-law said to me years ago. Uh, she looked at me and she said, don't get old. <laughs> and, uh, and this was maybe uh, after she looked at me and when she uh, went to tell me something, she called me the names of probably 12 other women in the family before she said Leslie. And then she, she went like this and she said, oh, don't get old. Uh, so she is, uh, and I smile when I say this because she had a tremendous attitude uh, about aging. And I am inspired by the tremendous attitudes of the people that I see every Tuesday and every Thursday at Peak Health and Fitness. Um, bringing to mind something that Barbara said to me, please, Leslie, talk about the importance of friends, of socialization. Um, your peer group at this time in your life is just as important as it was when you were in kindergarten and you started to make friends at five years old. It is important for you to have relationships 
uh, with people who are at the same stage in life that you are. It's important because you support each other. You are each other's support system. And as Barbara said, you know, she has many different families. At peak, you have your peak family. And I have to tell you, when I come in, not just on Tuesday and Thursday, because our seniors are an active part of our health club. And they are there every single, I mean, Barbara's got her workout stuff on, not her clothes, the other Barbara, Barbara Ackerman. She's going to the gym after this. And I know because I see Barbara there almost every day that I'm there. Um, and there are, uh, and there's actually, I, I will tell you about a, a little verb um, that was developed uh, by one of the members. Her name is Roberta. I don't know Roberta's last name. I haven't seen her there in quite a while. Uh, but R Roberta used to say, if someone was a little lady coming into one of the classes, they're still bageling. <laughs> bageling. Bageling means having a bagel, coffee, which is part of what the seniors do uh, before and after. Um, and there, I, it just makes me so happy to see the relationships, to see the friendships, many of which started at peak, um, and many of which started maybe in someplace else. You know, someone saying, you know what, I go to these great classes, there's this wonderful senior program, come with me someday, come and see what it's all about. Our numbers are enormous. Uh, we quite often, I will say the minimum number of people in one of our classes is maybe 25. It's not unusual for us to have 40 people in the room. 40 active people every single Tuesday and Thursday, coming in snowstorms, coming in rainstorms, uh, just really appreciating how important it is to get out of the house. Uh, there's a woman who shared with me a few years ago, uh, a woman who has uh, Parkinson's, part of Parkinson's disease, unfortunately, is depression. Uh, it's known that depression is something that uh, people who have Parkinson's often experience. And so depression, you know, if you know anybody who's ever dealt with depression, you know, you quite often don't want to get out of bed. You certainly don't want to leave your house. Just the knowledge that she would see people that she knew on Tuesdays and Thursdays was enough for her to get out of bed on time, to put her makeup on, and to get to peak to see her friends. So I haven't even started to talk about the physical benefits. So I, you know, I really want you all to take very seriously how important it is. Um, and, and sometimes you really do have to kick yourself in the rear end and get yourself out of bed. It's a, it's it's hard. It's really hard, especially when you're not feeling 100%. Um, so getting to why it is so important to stay um, active. You know, your activity changes as you get older. Um, so thinking back 10, 15, 20 years ago, did anyone in here play tennis? Okay. Uh, did anyone in here do a lot of bicycling? Okay. Uh, running? <laughs> Hiking? You, you have to put your hands down. Yeah. Okay. All right. So these are all activities which we may associate with past decades in our lives. And as we look back, you know, sometimes it's very easy to say, I can't do that anymore. That time in my, my life has passed. You know, and I, I, it would be unfortunate for many of us to say, well, you know, that's it. No more activity. We'll sit in a chair. We'll watch CNN. <laughs> you know, I always tell my father, no, you watch way too much television. Uh, uh, but very seriously about this, get out and move your body. In a few minutes, all I'm going to ask you to do is turn your chair and face me. You're not even going to leave your chair, and I am going to get you moving. Yeah. Moving every single part of your body. One of the best ways to combat osteoarthritis is to keep yourself moving. To move your joints, to encourage lubrication of the joints so that they move easier. You mentioned, um, you know, your hundred-year-old friend who started to sort of bend forward a bit more in the knees. Yeah, it gets really comfortable. You know, I'll tell you, when I'm alone in my house and I walk down the stairs, I can hear my knees. <laughs> yeah, when I'm alone in the house, I can hear my knees. So, you know, for me, um, I always say to myself, what I'm feeling now, I don't want it to get any worse. So. Just by virtue of the fact that I am moving every single day. I mean, some days you feel better about doing it than others. Some days you're tired, and you really don't feel like you can move the same way that you moved yesterday. It doesn't mean that you should sit still. Modify what you did yesterday, and just do a softer version. 
right? So, uh, what I teach is called uh, Joint Mobility Chair Yoga Fusion. It is a fusion of movement for every joint in the body, um, a bit of meditation, the most, most important part of meditation for our purposes in movement uh, is breath work, which is known as pranayama. In the <coughs> and the word pranayama, it's a beautiful word, the root of that word, prana, actually means life's energy. And it's not the energy that it takes to go from here to that door. It is life's energy. It is all of those factors which distinguish us from each other. We are no two the same. We might be the same height, uh, the same weight, the same body type, the same age, but we are all completely different. And through pranayama, which is conscious breath work, we create a greater sense of balance in prana. So just a couple of, exam of examples of that would be, uh, let's say, a, a very aggressive person may have a bit too much aggression and try to soften the aggression by going to the softer side of the personality. I could give you 50 different examples, but I'm sure you can think of a few on your own, ways that deep breathing can help to equalize or balance your energies. And in addition to that, as you start to move your body, using your breath to create greater physical balance. So, you know, uh, your shoulders might be tight, but it's usually one shoulder that's tighter than the other. Your hips might be tight, but it's usually one hip that's tighter than the other. And so on throughout the body. So as we start to move in just a moment or two, I'm going to ask you to use your breath. And we're going to start with a meditation. I will tell you, you've already meditated today. Um, it's a bit different, um, but yet the same, uh, as Joe Carolyn did with you a few minutes ago. Uh, but for our purposes, just to really wind down and to notice the breath, uh, and that's what we're going to start with today. Uh, we won't do a complete hour because, of course, we don't have time for an hour, but um, I'm going to give you a little mini course in joint mobility and chair yoga fusion. Okay? So if you're not already facing me, what I'd like you to do is just push away from the table. Just uh, don't even leave your chair. Turn your chair so that you are facing me. I'm going to get my chair to face you. Yes? Yes. All right. So scoot your butt back and sit back so that you can actually feel the chair. All right? Uncross your legs. Set your feet on the floor. Turn your palms up. And close your eyes. As you close your eyes, think about turning your focus around and directing it in. quiet around you, and there's quiet inside you. Get to that peaceful place just by being aware of it. Clear your mind. Clear the clutter of your thoughts. Acknowledge any passing thought. Acknowledge that it might be a distraction to you. And as you filter through your thoughts, select only those which serve you. And the rest of them place in the back of that giant filing cabinet, which is your mind. We'll retrieve those thoughts later. Bring your attention to your breath. And as you sit quietly with the support of the chair underneath you, establish rhythm and flow in your breath. Feel the rise and fall of your chest as you're breathing. And you can choose to breathe in through your nostrils and out of your mouth, or if you'd like closing your mouth, breathing just through your nostrils. This is called ujjayi breathing in yoga. <coughs> and if you can master this over time, you can establish a vibration in the back of your throat upon exhale. You can try that for a few moments. So notice as well, as you quiet your mind and as you slow down your breath, your heart rate begins to slow as well. This is all part of that cardiovascular relationship, the relationship between the lungs and the heart. 
from the history of yoga. There is a fable that we were all born with a finite number of breaths, and that slowing the breath down would prolong life. Feel your shoulders now settle from your ears, and feel the lengthening of your spine. The crown of your head rises towards the ceiling, and then drop in a little deeper into your seat and anchor your sitting bones down to the seat of the chair. Feel your shoulder blades once again settling against the back of the chair, knowing that there is support now, complete support. So whatever you do, you're safe in your chair and feeling the support of the seat of the chair and the back of the chair. Setting your feet comfortably now, step them apart just about the distance of your hips. And now without opening your eyes, we're going to start a little bit of movement with the neck and the shoulders. And so the first thing, you do this with your eyes closed if you'd like, breathing and moving together, sinking the breath with the movement of your head. Exhale and turn your head right and left. And continue turning your head right and then left. Exhale with each turn of your head. All right, one more time in each direction. Good, and then bringing it back to center, your eyes still closed. On the next exhale, drop your chin to your chest. And then inhale and bring it back to neutral. And now do that at your own pace four more times, exhaling as the chin bows forward, and then back to center. Three. Two. And one more. Good, with your head back to neutral and your eyes still closed. Slow head circles. So just bring your head around slowly in a circle and use your breath to control the pace of the movement. And we'll do five in each direction. And one more in this direction. Okay, switch for another five. And one more time in this direction. Good, and then coming back to center, eyes are still closed. So last movement, you're just going to take ear to shoulder as you exhale leaning your head in one direction and then in the other. And so we've kept the eyes closed through these, this sequence of head and neck movements, closing the eyes, deepening the breath and slowing it down. This is a meditation. By definition, meditation is a selective altering of the consciousness. We choose to focus on a particular thing in the absence of other things. We are completely present in the breath and in the body. All right, let's bring it back to center. Turn your palms down and slowly open your eyes. All right, how are we doing? Eyes open now. Okay, so I'm actually gonna put the microphone down so that I can move a little better and I will speak louder. If you can't hear me, just watch me, okay? Good, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hands down. So we started with the neck, the movements of the head and the neck. And now we're gonna work the way down to the shoulders. So go ahead and sit a bit taller, arms at your side, loose. Just go ahead and shake everything out. Just allow for your arms to loosen up, okay? And then lift your shoulders and bounce them. Good, beautiful. And then still, lift and roll the shoulders back. Good, and two. Good, inhale to lift them, exhale to release. And three, and four, and one more. Good, now let's switch directions. So lift and roll forward. Two, three, four, and five. And relax. Now turning the palms up. Now we're going to be lifting the arms. I'm going to go up overhead. If you're not able to lift over your head, just go as high as you can. So if you can just take it to 
shoulder height, that's perfectly fine. We're going to turn the palms up, so we're pushing the air up, and then like rain falling, wiggle your fingers as you release down. Good, and now push up on the inhale. Good, and exhale, rain falling. So we're getting lots of movement in the fingers, tiny little bones in the hands, and we're trying to move everything. Good, and four. And last one. Very nice. All right, now reach your arms up. Take them in front of your chest if you're not able to go above your head. So this is the modification. Okay, right out in front of your shoulders if you can't take it above your head. If you can take it above your head, take it above your head. And now turn your hands inside out and press your hands up. So again, you're pressing out in front of your chest if you need to modify. All right, let's take a little turn to the right. I am your mirror. And then to the left. Good. And then back to center. Now let's all go to chest height. So as you press out in front of you, right in front of your chest, you're opening up your upper back and at the same time, stretching your wrists and your fingers. All right, now let's take it over to the right. Look past your left shoulder. Good, and then through the center, and then in the opposite direction, take it left and look past your right shoulder. Good, and back to center, and release and shake it out. Now, with your feet flat on the floor, do a little what we call a spinal twist. Take your right arm, if you'd like, to the back of your chair and your left hand to the outside of your knee or thigh, and rotate your ribcage and your spine. So we've got the feet and the hips and the navel all pointing forward, but from the navel up, we're turning. Exhale as you twist. This is called a spinal <coughs> twist. And spinal twists are great releasers of tension. We have a tremendous number, thousands <coughs> of nerve endings which are along the spine. And so we release all of this nervous energy as we twist. All right, nice and easy, bring it back through center. Good, and now same thing in the opposite direction. Left arm around the back of the chair, the right hand to the outside of your knee or thigh. So as you're twisting, it's not unusual to feel your vertebra moving. Is anybody feeling that? Yeah, you might not be aware of it. Perfectly safe unless there's pain associated with it, right? And bring it back through center. All right, sitting tall, take your hands to your thighs. Inhale, and then as you exhale, slide your hands forward to your knees and bring your shoulders forward, drop your chin to your chest. Good, and then inhale and sit tall. Good. So now subtle movements of the spine. Exhale, bring your hands forward, drop your chin to your chest. Good, and back to center. And let's do that one two more times. Exhale. And inhale. And one more time, exhale. And inhale. Okay. So now for this next movement, uh, what I'd like you to do is move away from the back of your chair, come out a bit, and step your feet apart a little more than hips distance. Take your hands to your knees. One of the favorite movements of mine, it's called a trunk circle. You're just going to circle your body around your hips. And you can close your eyes if you feel a little dizzy as you're moving, because you know the rope is moving with you. Okay, so if you get a little dizzy, just close your eyes. And we're going to actually do eight of these in each direction. I always tell the group that I teach on Tuesdays and Thursdays, this is an excellent movement for you to do if you find yourself sitting for long periods of time, reading, sewing, at a computer, watching television, whatever. If you find yourself sitting, what's going to happen is your lower back will tighten up and your hips will tighten up over time, and you, I'm sure that everybody's experienced that. You get up and seated, and you feel like you can't move for a few moments because everything tightens up and you're motionless. So just a few trunk circles, you know, uh, in between, maybe every 30 minutes, push your seat away from wherever you're sitting and just get your spine and hips moving. Good, and one more. Very nice, I think that was about eight. I lost count. <laughs> okay, switch direction. Okay, you know, I'm a Gemini. I don't know if you know anything about astrology <laughs> or chatterboxes. <laughs> we are chatterboxes. Oh, really? so you, yeah. So we're going to be here till about three o'clock. <laughs> Good. It's okay. We've got food. <laughs> right? Good. Oh, you're laughing. Oh gosh, that's great. So now you're moving your facial muscles too. Isn't that nice? A few laughs, a few smiles. That's all part of it. One more time in this direction, I think. Okay. And back to center. Good. And then walk your feet a little closer to each other. This next movement, uh, you can settle back just a little, but not against the chair. 
This is called the rag doll. And this is a movement that we do in standing yoga practices where we stand up and we just fold forward. We're not worried about the hands touching the floor, uh, but we're just gonna let the arms dangle. So what we're going to do is walk the hands down the thighs, to the knees, to the shins, and then let go, let your head go, let your arms hang, accept where your arms are and don't judge yourself. If you're having difficulty having your hands close to the floor, you can set your hands on the tops of your shoes, you can hold on to your knees and your shins, but this is a release of tension for the spine. The primary goal, physical goal that is, of yoga practice is preserving and promoting the integrity of the spine. Now, slowly walk yourself back up. And now start, uh, finish up with an inhale. Reach your arms up, or as high as they will go. Nice big inhale, and exhale, release. And then we'll do that one one more time. So again, walk your hands down slowly. Chest resting on the thighs. Let your arms go, let your head go. Exhale completely, clear your lungs. it up with an overhead reach, inhaling, and exhale. Beautiful. So we started with the neck. We worked the way down the spine. Okay, we're going to get a little movement in the legs now. So you can stay as you are, and you can pull the chair if you feel a little unsteady. Notice that we haven't left the chair, so everyone can do these movements, and I've given you some modifications as you've gone. So this is even an ideal practice uh, for someone who is confined to a chair uh, for someone who has, uh, we have several people who come uh, to peak uh, using walkers and they transition to a regular chair and keep the walker within reach. So, so far we haven't come out of the chair, right? Very, very user friendly. Hands on the chair, sit nice and tall. All I want you to do is lift your legs one at a time for 10, nine, like you're marching, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, and one. All right, now let's do that again. We'll add on to the movement. So start with your right leg. Lift, open it to the right, back to center, and release. Lift, open, center, release. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, almost there, and one more. Good, and back to center. Take your hands to the outside of your knees, and as you exhale, squeeze your thighs together, engage the muscles of the inner thighs. Good, and so what we do is also working on the strengthening of the muscles, that's just as important. And then from there, release it, take your hands to the inside of your knees, and like you're prying your knees apart, uh, offer resistance to your palms. So knees, inside of the knees on the palms, just go ahead and push the knees to the palms, the palms to the knees, like you're trying to break your knees apart. That's it, good, and relax. Okay, we'll do that one two more times. So again, hands to the inside of the knees, push against your hands with your knees, push against your knees with your hands, and release, good, and one more time. Press against your hands with your knees and your knees with your hands, good, and release, very nice. So walk your feet a little further apart, good. Sit tall, and now walk them closer to each other, and walk them apart, good, and walk them in, and walk them apart, good, and walk them in, and apart, and in, and one more time out, and one more time in, excellent. We're gonna raise the heart right now. Very simple movement. The more important part of this movement is that it is a sequence for you to remember. So I think we're all concerned about keeping our minds sharp. It's not just about remembering the sequences that you do every single day. It's about challenging your mind to remember new sequences. So a song comes on the radio that you heard 30 years ago, and of course you remember the words to it, right? But 
it is the immediate stuff, like from today and yesterday, that we have a hard time with. It's the short-term memory. So one of the ways that we can assist ourselves in sharpening up the short-term memory is to give ourselves tasks, little challenges along the way, okay? So we're going to move our bodies, but you're going to have to remember what to move and when to move it, okay? All right? So let's try not to give ourselves a headache by doing this, okay? <laughs> we'll start simple, and we'll challenge ourselves as we go. Okay, you ready? Good, starting with your right foot, just step it out and in. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, do the same thing left. One, two, three, four, five. Simple enough, right? Let's alternate. Right, left, right, left, right, left, four, three, two, and one. Good. Perfect so far. All right, now let's add another movement. So we're going to start with the right foot. Let's do this together. Step it out, in, front, back, out, in, front, back, three, you got it. Four, and just one more on the right. Out, in, front, back. Great, now let's do the same thing left. Left foot. Out, in, front, back. Out, in, front, back. Three, four, one more. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you to alternate that one. Okay, <laughs> start with the right foot. Yeah. Oh, we haven't even gotten started yet. <laughs> I told you, 3 o'clock. <laughs> okay, start with the right foot. Out, in, front, back. Now left. Out, in, front, back. And right. Out, in, front, back. Right, left. Out, in, front, back. Now right. Out, in, front, back. Five, four, three, two, and one more. <laughs> So you're going to actually turn in your chair. I want you to turn to the right. And as you turn to the right, 
the right foot is on the floor, hold the chair with your right arm, and lunge your left back, left foot back behind you. Just go as far as you can, and don't worry about how far you're going. So the lunging leg is the back leg, the left leg. Inhale, take your left arm and reach it out. Good, and then reach over your ear as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, bend and tap your hip. Good, and do that four more times. And three. And two, and one more time. Excellent. Now, if you can, release both arms, or you can do this just with your left arm. If you can reach up with both, the palms are facing each other. Let's bring the hands together and turn them inside out, pressing the palms to the ceiling. Good. And now bring the arms in front of you, across from your chest. And now bring them behind your back. Clasp your hands. Now drop your chin forward to your chest and pull your hands towards the floor. And release it. And now turn to face me. If you can, you'll turn that left foot flat. The right knee is bent, so this is really great at spreading your hips and opening them. Bring your arms to shoulder height. This is called warrior two. And this is why we call the sequence the warrior sequence. Inhale, and as you exhale, just drop back, raise the right arm, and rest your left hand at the back of your left thigh. You're almost done with this side. As you exhale, elbow resting on the thigh, go ahead and reach over with your left arm. Side angle pose. This sequence that we're doing is often done in pretty much every standing yoga practice. And you're doing it in your chair. Good. Relax. And then let's turn to the left, and we'll repeat the sequence on the other side. Okay. So turning to the left, left arm around the back of your chair, left foot on the floor. Lean forward and lunge your right leg back behind you. Good. Sit tall. Support yourself by holding onto the chair. With an inhale, raise your right arm this time, and now reach over your ear as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, just tap your hip with your elbow. And two. Three, four, and just one more. That's it, good. And now inhale, reach up with both arms if you can, just with the right arm if you need your arm around the back of the chair. Now clasp your hands and turn them inside out, press the palms to the ceiling. Good, arms are as straight as you can get them to be. And as you exhale, bring it in front of your chest now, press out in front of your chest. That's it, good. And now take it behind your back, clasp your hands again. Pull your knuckles to the floor, drop your chin to your chest. Good. All right, releasing your hands. Facing front, we turn the right foot flat. We bring the arms to shoulder height. So we're looking to the left now. Look at over your fingertips. Looks good. Good, now take it back into reverse. Rest your right hand at the back of your right leg. Reach actively back. Feel things opening up. You are moving your body. You're releasing tension in your body as you go. As you exhale, drop your elbow to your thigh, and now nice and easy. If you can, reach over. You can always rest your hand at your hip if this doesn't feel right for your right shoulder. Good, one more breath in. And on the breath out, release it, and come back and sit forward. Let's return to where we started. Sit all the way back in your chair, and let's just do a little movement for the hands. So I want you to warm up your hands, as I mentioned before, you have lots of tiny little bones in your hands. Fingers get stiff. We get arthritis in the joints. So warming up the palms of your hands and then the backs of your hands as well. So we're gonna do a little movement and what we're doing is preparing the hands for this movement just by warming them up. The last movement before we do that is just like you're washing your hands. So this is a massage that you can do for yourself and this feels really great with cold hands. This is something that I would recommend that you all do, especially for your thumbs. Who has bad thumbs? Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's all, I, I read that there's an enormous percentage of the female community that has bad thumbs. So let's start out, and this benefits men as well, we'll start out with a thumb movement. Fingers together, thumb circles. Just a yoga for your hands. Okay. So just isolate, just circle your thumbs. Good, and now reverse it. Good. And now spread your fingers. And now bring the tips of your fingers together. 
Spread your fingers, tips together. Three, four, and five. Good, and then just wiggle your fingers. Good, lots of movement, beautiful. All right, now take your hands together, clasp your hands, palms are together, circle your wrists. Good, just your wrists. That's it, five times in each direction. Switch direction now. That's it. Beautiful. All right. And then the last one, hook your uh, pinkies together. Notice which one is on top, and then just switch the other one on top. And then with the ring finger, same thing. Good. So just switch the one that's on top. Good. And just move through using all of your fingers until you get to your thumb, and then start all over again, pinky to pinky. Ring finger to ring finger, tall finger to tall finger, index finger to index finger, thumb to thumb, and relax and shake it all out. So finishing off just with shaking your hands, you can do it this way, or you can take hold of your wrist with one hand and give your hand a really good shake. <laughs> Feels really good though, doesn't it? You laugh, right? Good, and then same thing with the other. My hands shake, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? All right, now just uh, just so that you can put it into practice and really feel it. Now, how do your hands feel? Good. It's amazing, yeah. right? And, I, you know, we have probably 15 different movements that we did. And again, just kind of a shortened version of that. Um, what I'd like to do is finish the way that we started today. So sit back in your chair and remember how we sat with the palms up. We sat with an invitation to open our practice. And now as we close the practice, we turn the palms down. And you're going to close your eyes. And uh, what I think you might notice is that the ease of closing your eyes and the ease, the ease of keeping your breath slow, it's so much easier now. Your eyes are closed. And just think about resting your eyes in their sockets. It's not about napping. It's not about sleeping. It's just about being restful. And so if nothing else, for these last few several minutes, you have cleared your mind and become completely present in this experience, present in mind and in body. So the glue that brings these movements together is the breath. And in the absence of breath, it's really just calisthenics. It's no different than really anything that you would do in a gym or on your own to exercise. But by weaving breath into the whole process you are doing yoga. So that even if you're sitting in your chair, or lying on your bed, or sitting on your couch, conscious breathing with conscious movement equals a yoga practice. Fusing this practice with joint mobility touches almost every single joint in the body, encourages freedom of movement, And so one more thing that I would like to add, echoing the words of our friend Joe Carolyn about falling, improve the suppleness and movement of your joints, and you will, to a very large extent, support yourself enough to avoid falling. Falling, falling is a function of the joints locking quite often or losing balance. So as you create greater strength in your muscle grooves and greater suppleness in your joints, you can help yourself to avoid this. All right, let's just go ahead and open the eyes now. And in closing, bring your hands to your heart, bow your forehead to your fingertips, and close your eyes for just one more moment as you honor yourselves and you honor each other. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if there's anything I didn't cover, do you have any questions for me? Um, I just want to tell you that I did bring some pamphlets, uh, some little pamphlets with our schedule at Peak Health and Fitness, our forever young schedule. Uh, feel free to take one. The forever young program does not meet in the evening. Uh, the programming is uh, daytime programming, and I've uh, my two classes are Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesday at 10:30, Thursday at 10:45. Uh, but there's other program there, programming. There are other teachers who do teach. Uh, there's Pat and Susie and some other uh, fitness professionals at Peak who also work um, with the senior population. So, yes? What would you do for a 
What would I do for what? Trigger finger. Trigger finger. Trigger finger. Trigger finger. Oh. <laughs> well, I actually have one. Yeah. yeah. What do you do? Um, you know, I don't know that any of these movements would completely eliminate it, but what I would say is massaging your hands, doing those three first massages where you're rubbing the hands, getting all the warmth into the hands. Um, what I would say also is, you know, uh, a trigger finger is like a sticking joint, you know, and it's, it's really interesting. It's And it's not usually constant. Do you find that with your trigger finger? It's not constant. Sometimes it's not there, and then sometimes it just reemerges. you know. I've had my finger injected for trigger finger. Um, never do that again, because it's not worth the pain of the injection. It certainly it's not worth it. Uh, what I find to be more effective is just by keeping my hands active. You know, the joints in your hand, they need the same attention that every other joint in your body. Um, if you have your, if, if, if I could get you with your socks and shoes off, I would give you some yoga for your feet as well. Um, so I, I would just say keep, keep your hands active just like every other part of your body. Anything else? No? Well, thank you so much. You know, um, I don't know what the average age is. I am very respectful, and I don't ask. People have offered. People have offered to me. I'm going to tell you that we have, and you, and ladies, Jan, you can, uh, Barbara, you can correct me on this. We have a tremendous number of people in their 80s. I think that the greatest concentration of people is 80 to 90. Do you think so? Yeah. And again, I don't know how, how old the ladies are. Uh, and then are sometimes people share with me. Um, anyone who's ever shared with me has shared through pride. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Um, and I'll tell you, I more often than not, it's someone telling me I just had my 80th birthday or I just had my 85th birthday. So you know, as I said to you, I'm 60 and I am considered a senior citizen. We do have people in their 60s, in their 70s, in their 80s. We definitely have people in their 90s, and I'm not saying just one person in their 90s. We have every single decade, and all are welcome. So, yeah. Well, thank you very much. That was, that was informative for the mind and certainly for the body. And, oh, wow, that was great. We thank you. I'm, I'm going to be taking some pictures of the um, speakers and um, the ladies.